Hi there, Chris Martinson of Peak Prosperity here with your update. It is Friday, September 14th, uh, 2018. Listen, on Sunday, I'm going to be in New York City with Adam Taggart. Jim Kunstler is coming and David Stockman, and we're going to have a variety of people there. I think we've got uh, a pretty good crowd showing up this time, and uh, you should come to that if you can. That's peakprosperity.com slash NYC. Hey, what are we going to do? We're going to talk about all the data that's going on out there and uh, I'm really excited to have Jim Kunstler there because he's going to be talking about the social angles of all this if you've been following his work. He's been talking about the levels of, of uh, just insanity that people seem to be slipping into which which I understand. I'll get to that in a second. And then David Stockman is you know former uh, OMB director under Reagan and a long career on Wall Street. Listen he gets the numbers. We're going to be talking about the fiscal situation of the United States, the macro situation, the political situation, because you have to understand those if you want to know what's going on here. And, and look, the United States is slipping deeper and deeper into red ink, not any different from any of these other countries out there in the world. And look, you have to stay oriented at this particular period of time. This is crazy making because all of our main narratives are just breaking down at this point in time. And so I understand why people are upset. I happen to think a lot of people are upset at the wrong things. They happen to be uh, very distracted by a media that, that's very complicit in this, uh, really seeking to keep people distracted at each other's throats. Uh, you know, it's a new outrage du jour, but none of them end actually end up pointing in the right places. So, as you know, one of my more recent updates that I did here was about uh, the fact that the United States voting system is completely insecure and delivering completely statistically uh, irrelevant, if not impossible, sort of results. That should be big news. Chirping crickets from the media on that one. Chirping crickets even from among my, many of my own uh, readers who still want me to understand that voting is the thing we all need to do. And I'm like, well, listen, uh, not if the keepers of the system are running an unfair system. You know, they have a saying in Texas, which is, if, you're, if you've been at the card table for a half hour and you don't know who the sucker is, it's you. So I'm not going to be a sucker in this game at this point in time. If we have voting systems that are literally just flick of the switch sorts of operations for the people in charge, well, what's the point, right? And the status quo, though, I completely get it. I understand, like, if I was in their situation, if I was in the situation of being, say, uh, the Federal Reserve Chair at this point in time or leading one of these Senate committees or anything like that, I, I get it. Look. There are no real good answers at this point in time. Nobody wants to be the deliverer of that bad news. And I think it was Upton Sinclair who said, I hope I get this right, uh, maybe paraphrasing slightly, it's difficult to get a man to understand something if his salary depends on him not understanding it. Look, uh, put woman in there if that makes you feel better. It's the same thing. We're humans. We really don't like to rock the boat if we don't have to. There are very few people with integrity and courage out there right now who are willing to say what needs to be said. There are plenty, but not enough, certainly not in the halls of power. Nobody in politics feels like they can say what's actually true. So, I mean, kudos to that French environment minister who was on air a few weeks back and walked off and said, I can't do this anymore. I can't participate in this lie that we're telling ourselves. And what is that big lie for me? It's very simply this. It's not even that capitalism has failed or is failing. It's not any particular ism. It's our money. It's our money. We have debt-based fiat currency, and it grows exponentially. And the way we constructed our financial institutions, and our political institutions, and our geopolitics around the reality of the system of money we've got means that everything is going to collapse if our money system collapses. So we got to keep the money system growing. Oh, I, you know, I get it. I get it. What a difficult situation, but. Here are the two features of debt-based money systems. They're either growing exponentially or they're collapsing. If that doesn't sound like a, a really great system to have, then you're like me. It's, uh, you think, wow, we should probably change that. But if you don't get to that root level analysis, vote all the people in you want, imagine that Elon Musk and other electric cars are gonna save the day, think that it's possible to, to maybe uh, come up with some new policies, imagine that we can somehow go through bargaining purchases of, of whatever it is that, that we're gonna get that's gonna help us consume a little less. None of it matters if you have a money system that has to grow exponentially or it's collapsing. Those are the two states. At least that's what the data says right now. 
And so, yes, I'm an advocate of sound money. That doesn't necessarily mean gold. I happen to think gold would be fine because it works. And it, we already know how it works. And it's already distributed and it's in the system. So I think it would be great if we used that. But I really wouldn't care. And what are the elements of sound money? Very simply, um, it has to be in limited supply. And you can't conjure it out of thin air. You either have it or you don't. And whether you have it or not is not subject to political whim or manipulation. The kind of money we have today is the very opposite of sound money and it's going to blow up on us because it's not sending the signals that we need to be receiving. Even as I'm speaking about this, I will bet you that the stock market is in the United States has mysteriously got recovered and rescued once again. It's been doing this day after day, month after month, even year after year because that's all that the keepers of the system know how to do is just jam the market a little higher, a little longer, and this will all work. And they're desperate. Their narrative's failing. They don't know what else to do. At any rate, if you want to talk about that, uh, come to the website. I got a brand new two-parter up just as going out today on Friday. And, and at the end of that, I'm really talking about um, that there's an easy way to do this and there's a hard way to do all of these things. And the easy way is really centered on, thank you, Mr. Plane. Good job flying straight overhead. Uh, the easy way is changing by insight. The hard way is changing by pain. We all know how this works, right? We change by pain. We finally get serious about our weight when we have the heart attack or our drinking when we back over the dog or get a DUI. Or There's some moment of pain that leads to that moment of saying, I've hit rock bottom, got to change this, right? Well, if you look at Hurricane Florence, 550 miles wide, just full of moisture, you look at the 50 degree centigrade temperatures we had across Europe this year, the fact that Siberia is on fire or the Arctic ice is disappearing, where are the insects, you know, all of these things, each one of those should be one of those moments where we could, we could figure out by insight that we have to begin doing things very differently really, really soon. Well, 30 years ago would be best, but today is the second best day. And we can't get there. We, we just, we can't get there with a national conversation or a global conversation yet, which means that collectively we're going to change by pain, but you don't have to do that. You can change by insight. That's one of the great things about being an individual. We're, it's a lot easier for us to change by insight uh, if we choose. And so the easy way really speaks to that idea that we can change what we do at any point in time relatively easily once we decide that's what we want to do. And so I'll leave you with this. Uh, you know, integrity, I always thought I, I, I operate from a very high position of integrity. For a long time, I thought that meant that I was holding fast to something, like I, I had a sense of self. I, I could hold on to that and, and it would always be faithful. I would have high fidelity in my reactions to things. That's a good start, but I realize there's a deeper layer to that, uh, an insight that somebody helped share with me, which is this, that integrity means being completely willing to be 100% re-educated at any moment in time. What kind of a person is, has this inner strength and the fortitude to be completely re-educated? at any moment in time, I would submit to you it's somebody with extraordinarily high integrity. Integrity, of course, something really sadly missing at the higher ends of power right now all over the world. Welcome to the system of money we have and how it interacts with human wiring. So with that, I'm Chris Martinson. I will see you next week for everybody who I will see in New York City on Sunday uh, on the 16th. Can't wait. It's going to be an absolutely fabulous time. I will see you there.